Now, ahead of that memoir, which you've heard an awful lot about, Unleashed, I don't know when it comes out, but very 10th soon. 10th of October. Oh, there you go. You, oh, what is it today? 5th, all right. Uh, anyway, Boris Johnson has been speaking to Camilla Tomini to talk about his time in office and his views on politics. Well, in the interview, he says it will be a disaster if Sir Keir Starmer tries to row back on Brexit. Let's take a listen. I believe that we're great if we do things on our own. Mm. I think we're great if I think that national independence is extremely important. And I think that that point is proved beyond peradventure of a doubt in Unleashed. Yes. Because having secured full national independence, we were able to do things differently, mm. such as the vaccine rollout, such as the AUKUS pact, such as the uh, taking a different stance well, from uh, our European partners on, think, on Ukraine. Do you think... And I th so I think, and I, I believe, and what worries me now is that the, the Starmer government is really determined to try to, uh, to roll all this stuff back, mm. and it will be a disaster. Unless we keep that proper control, we won't be able to do things like that again. So Rachel Reeves is now saying we've got to go back into being a, a, a rules taker mm. from the EU. What do you now, think? If we'd Starmer been a, and Reeves are trying to reverse. Brexit? So if we'd been a rules, this is, this is the key point. If we, yeah, that's what. That's, of course they are. Now, if we'd been a rules taker, yes, in the, at the end of 2020, 2021, mm. we would not have been able to authorize AstraZeneca I and totally Pfizer. Agree. No, no, no. But you keep you keep interrupting this because it's very, very important, and and that was how. By March 2021, we had vaccinated 45% of the UK population. The vaccine programme compared will to always 10%. be part of your legacy. Well, it's not just Brexit. The former Prime Minister also set to reveal aspects of his relationship with the late Queen. Uh, I Did think you you're... have a bit of a testy relationship with King Charles? Did you get on with the Queen no, and I, Prince Philip very, a bit better uh, than... No, I think... I, 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 look, I mean, I, I, what's certainly fair to say is that I used to see the Queen every week. Yes. And that was one of the great, great joys of the job because it was kind of free psychotherapy. Yeah. And there was no, no, no confession so appalling. that you know, She'd heard it all before, well, right? Would you say she and had she, her work cut out with you compared to other prime ministers? I don't know. She, you'd have to, well, well, I don't know. But she, she was always, look, she was, what I can say is she was always very supportive and kindly and, and full of, of really good advice. And so she wouldn't, she wouldn't, you know, I, I sort of have a fair idea of what she's thought about lots of things, but um, she wouldn't really reveal her hand much, but she would, she would, you she would nudge you. You indicate that she's a bit Brexity. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go into her political views and, and, and that wouldn't be right. Oh, I like the fact he's keeping that to himself. Oh, he's very respectful, I think, of the late Queen. Well, so he should be. Yeah. He spoke about their last meeting together. I read a little excerpt in the Daily Mail this week, um, saying that she had a white smile that lit up the room. And even in that last meeting, just two days before her death, she was still smiling like that, lighting up the room. Mm. I thought that was quite nice. Well, let's talk to former special advisor to Michael Gove, Charlie Rowley, and political commentator Andy Williams. Good to see you both. He's coming to the defence of the... Well, no, it's not. It's, it's, it's going on the attack of the government, the Labour government. Um, I just think it's extraordinary, Charlie, that he's doing all this now. It's four months too late, isn't it? He could have, he could have had an impact on the election. Well, he, um, uh, he might have done. Um, I mean, I know he wrote a couple of pieces. You know, he made a, wrote a scathing attack on yeah, Keir Starmer in, the, in, 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 in the Daily Mail. Well, he didn't have a book to launch <laughs> during oh, his wow. electoral campaign, yeah. so I think um, mm. uh, he must have been uh, keeping his powder dry for uh, for these interviews. But um, uh, look, there's, he's obviously on the attack. There's a lot to go on. Mm. Um, he, he wanted Rishi to lose, didn't he? Let's be honest, he did. Well, I do yeah. know. If he, I mean, I, I think he did. I think so. There is, a, for whatever your views, I suppose, about um, whether you were Team Boris, whether you were Team Rishi, whether you were Team Truss. Um, I remember her. Um, uh, <laughs> briefly, um, you know, I think 
at the end of the day, everybody still believed, even though you know the Tories had lost the um, uh, the ear of the public. Of course, they weren't interested in listening to them, and, and why would they? Because mm. well, the Boris Johnson was taking place, but but everybody kind of felt that a, you know, a Labour government would be worse than a Conservative one, and that's coming home to roost. Ah, oh, well, Boris Johnson said if he was still in charge, if he hadn't have been kicked out, he would have won the 2024 general election. I and he did have the mandate in 2019. Do you think he's got a point? I think he probably does, um, because oh. and I do think that's actually true because. Uh, I still think there would have been, um, even though he was um, rightly sort of uh, holed over the coals for um, the, the lockdown rules that were broken in number 10, uh, it was the way it was handled. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily go down the route that he's gone down, which is apologising for apologising and saying that was a mistake. I think he should have apologised right from the get-go to say, I have discovered, or it has been brought to my attention, that there were people that were breaking the rules in number 10 and I've dealt with them. That's leadership of moving on, not turning up to the dispatch box three weeks running and saying you know, there were no parties when actually it then transpired that there, there might have been. Well, that's exactly the point. It's a moot point, isn't it, whether or not he would have won the 2024 election because he, brought, he was brought down by nobody other than himself, his lies, and his incompetence. And I think that is the point about Boris Johnson, is that there's... Uh, sometimes people think that he, he is still hugely popular, and I just don't think that's the case. I sort of think he's a bit of a, a busted flush, really. Um, I think his time as Prime Minister showed him up, in a way, and the public... A lot... A big... There's, of course, there'll always be people who love him, because he just breeds that kind of loyalty and whatever, and he is entertaining. But fundamentally, I think the majority of people think, no, we wouldn't like Boris back, actually. Well, he, he, and, and actually, mm, Charlie, I mean, do you think it's... Well, it's hold a, on a minute, hold mm. on a minute. Not many people, when you look at the polling, or whatever, are very pleased we've got Starmer in. No, I know, but, I mean, he has just won a massive majority, a bigger majority than Boris Johnson uh, won, by the way. Um, but I, I was going to say, Charlie... Do you do you think it'd be a good thing for the Conservative Party if Boris Johnson came back? Because I don't I don't think it's no, in, no, not, in not, your interest really. Is not, it? Not now, not now. He's obviously no. had his time as the leader of the uh, Conservative Party and Prime Minister. But I think back in in the election, I mean, elections have a very good way of sort of focusing the public's mind. And yes, there's always polling, there's always you know uh, focus groups and all the rest of it. But when I think it came to the actual campaign, now it could have been a sort of a, um, a Hillary Clinton style campaign where those you know, I'm, you know coming up to the presidential election, aren't we next month? But you know uh, in 2016, um, Hillary had the the um, those FBI emails shackle mm. around her neck, which you know constantly came up. Now Boris might have had the COVID shackle around his neck during yeah. that election campaign, but. People are very um, easy, I think, and able to, during a campaign, to look at someone that might have been uh, putting forward an optimistic, happy-go-lucky vision to say that, look, COVID is in the past, mistakes were made, but, you know, we've got to turbocharge the economy, we've still got to hang on to, to, to those Brexit freedoms under, you know, uh, Sir Keir, um, you know, um, whatever his name is, Snooze Army Fest or whatever. Crash a Rooney Snooze Fest. Snooze, whatever, it, exactly, like you know, the, the kind of words that Boris came out for Sir Keir. Mm. I think it would have actually made a huge difference. Mm. Rishi was just very unable to ask. I do I think, think Keir found him, I think Keir Starmer found him very difficult to deal with, mm. actually. Mm. I do. Because it's just not his personality to, to, to be able to neutralise someone like that. Mm. No, but what is Keir's personality in all of this? Because he seems to... I mean, certainly on, right, on, on the Chagos Islands business, we've got someone who is Prime Minister with a huge majority who was asked, and we'll play the clip in a second, you know, what does this mean for the sovereignty of, of other sovereign... British sovereign territories? Yeah. He doesn't answer the question. If I was in Gibraltar or in the Falklands, I'd be worried sick listening to this. Here you go. Argentina now saying they want the Falklands back. Can you guarantee that under Labour, no other um, overseas territories of Britain will be signed away? Look, the single most important thing was ensuring that we had um, a secure base, uh, uh, the, the joint um, US, in particular UK uh, base, hugely important to the US, hugely important to us. We've now secured that, uh, and that is why you saw such warm words from the US yesterday. I mean, why didn't he just say, uh, yes, we can guarantee that? Yeah, the only good answer to that question would have been yes. Yes, I next didn't... question. Yes, next question. Very direct. Shut it down. I don't know why he didn't. Um, it may be that he is, you know, he's not somebody who's steeped in foreign policy. I think he does rely a lot on his um, advisers, but nonetheless, it would have just been much better if he'd been really, really clear about that. Mm. And I think that's clear the big or problem. Is... honest? Well, I don't think he's being dishonest. I just think he, he's 
failing to answer questions as directly as as maybe he, he should. And it, that's the problem. There's a lack of clarity in Labour's communication at the moment. I do think that's yeah. a big problem. But is there a lack of clarity in the Tory camp as well? Because Boris Johnson, speaking to Camilla Tomney, sounds absolutely furious about the Chagel Silence decision. But then we're hearing from Liz Truss's spokesperson yesterday saying that it was Boris Johnson who asked her to start negotiations. James Cleverly saying this is all lies from and weak from the Labour government. Well, he was sat there in the negotiations himself when he was Foreign Secretary. Well, I think there are negotiations to try and give up territory and there might be conversations about whether you can uh, repatriate people. So people that had to leave the islands when we first took them over effectively, for them, and they are now able to move back, so that's part of their heritage. That might have been a conversation. But I think giving them up in totality is, is something uh, altogether quite quite different. But the, the lack of clarity on the on the Labour side, it's not even a lack of clarity. It's just Sir Keir Starmer is, clean, is not a politician. You know, if it was Tony Blair, Tony Blair would have been able exactly without any kind of advice to say yeah. no directly, because yeah. he's a politician as well as a lawyer. Sir Keir Starmer presented himself as someone that was obviously uh, very dull, very boring, very different from uh, the chaos of the past and the characters and the colourful characters that you might have had in, 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 in Tory... Uh, uh, as, as part of Tory Prime Ministers, but he's different and he's going to do things differently and he's going to get rid of the sleaze and the scandal. Coming in uh, uh, from day one, accepting God knows however many freebies at whatever cost, uh, whilst taking away, picking the pockets of uh, poor people in this you know. country, all the while paying your union bosses' payroll. Yeah, yeah, God, yeah no, union bosses. Yeah, and telling us how terrible our economy is and what kind of black well, hole we've got, which is totally ludicrous, by the way. Here's some is not... Come on, someone on Charlie. Someone else has said that that's not the case. This man... Any, oh, right, any, any chance? Take a Any chance to avoid? Yeah, yeah, take a breath, particularly in this room. Well, he can take a break. <laughs> <laughs> Keir Starmer's not, he's not somebody who's going to win the news cycle. He's not Tony Blair, but he's somebody who is... But he's done a good job of winning he's somebody the news cycle. Very, he's, somebody very, he's somebody who's serious, who's got a plan, and I think in a year's time, the now, the Winterfield thing, I, the, the Winterfield thing, I think, is a problem in terms of it's been unpopular. I think it's the right decision. But if you look at everything, if you look at oh. everything, if you look at everything really else, I think it's the right decision. Yeah, I overall I do actually. I, I think yeah. there are because I, I think there are I think there are ways in which you could have made the policy work a bit better. You could have looked at doing it by tax, but fundamentally the Winterfield allowance is something that 80% of people in receipt of it did not need, Ten according to Age UK, who were running. Use that Winterfield yeah, but most of them, they most of not, them, not all, but most rich didn't need people. Most, uh, some of them are not, and some of them are. Are going to lose their. Some of them aren't, that and is, some of them. That are. is a disgrace. No, it's not. It, it, no, it's a disgrace that some of them will lose it, and that's why the government needs to step in and pensioners. make. That's why it's ten yeah, but, million but, 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 but we don't that need is not a small number of people. Eight million country. of those people didn't need that money. For some of oh, those well, people, they're be, literally. For some of those people, it's pocket money. No, it's. I'm sorry, it's absolutely true. It's not the case that ten million people were relying on that two hundred pounds well, to go into that bank account. You're I'm telling me that everybody over sixty-five in I'm Britain afraid, needs that two hundred quid. When we see it's not the case. When we see the stories of poor pensioners that had to make a tough choice between heating and eating and couldn't turn on their heating this winter because it was taken from them, they will end up in hospital, there will be a winter crisis. And that's why it's important that the that government makes why... sure well, the people that, at the that margins... Will the, that will be the record of this Labour government so far and, and they should hang their head in shame. I, I mean, I, I don't agree. I do think it's been unpopular, but I think in a year's time, everything else, the freebies, all of that nonsense. I was on a show on GB News so last... Free, hold, last on, free, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, his hold on. Is it's winter nonsense. coats to some of those pensioners. He's got hold enough on. of them. I was on, I was on uh, Saturday Five last Saturday night, and everyone was telling me, oh, Rosie Duffield, everybody, this is, you know, this is ter terminal for the Labour government. Mm. People have forgotten it that is. already. People's memories are short about politics, and actually, fundamentally, all of this fluff, let's see what Labour actually well, do and deliver in a year's time. You can't say taking away the winter food allowance from pensioners. No, I said that was well, the exception. I said, if you look at the freebie stuff, I honestly think it is not... This it's, man... I really man, do not think it's The Prime through. Minister is so out of touch with reality in the mm. public. You know, he won a big majority, but it was a very thin majority. Uh, he's got um, reform uh, breathing down his neck because they came second in a number of constituencies. That's why it's it's vital, I think, for there to be a new Conservative leader to come and... But we all know reform are going to tear themselves issues. apart in the next five years anyway, well, we so they well, might not, not even exist much, in the next Not as much election. as the Labour Party mm. if they keep going down this path. Well, on that note, we've got to leave it, partly because our inbox is going to crash. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you can imagine what most of you are saying to that one, but they're all, they are being read. Can't go through them all. Uh, but... Uh, thank you both very much indeed. Yes, thank you. Good to see you both. I'll tell you what, Andy, you're a brave man. Oh.
Okay. Well, I don't yeah. see the I don't see these comments, so that's why it's I can. Probably for the best. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it at that, shall no, we? Look, at least he's prepared to come on here and say what he thinks. Don't have to agree with him, but you know. Yeah, all opinions welcome here. Yeah.